Okay, I will call this meeting of the Pawtucket School Committee to order at six o'clock. Ms. Barbara, will you please take a roll call? Ms. Danola? Mr. Charbonneau? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Knight? Yes. Mr. Larby? Ms. Duarino? Yes. Ms. Dubin? Here, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First on our agenda is special reports of student representatives. Do we have a representative here from Charles E. Shea High School? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Glenaria Santos, and I'm here to tell you our Shea happenings. Our class officers continue to discuss Shea events. Key Club, led by Mrs. Scarpelli, has been very busy helping our community. During the last month, they have made holiday cards for those who are shut in, made blankets, and have collected non-perishable items for the less fortunate. Content and credit recovery runs Monday through Thursday. We had our first dance in a while, the Shea Homecoming Dance. It was a huge success. 250 students attended and danced the night away. Our guidance team continues to have areas, area colleges and universities for our upperclassmen during advisory. We ended our football season at the annual Thanksgiving game in which we soundly defeated Tillman. Go Raiders! Winter sports have begun and most recently our boys basketball team took first place in the Lynch Donaldson tournament at the Boys and Girls Club. The Shea Student Council worked on the thank you notes and are moving forward with ideas from the student council student government meeting. Some of our seniors attended the financial aid workshop sponsored by Senator Jack Weed on November 22nd at CCRI. And on December 9th, the College Planning Center was at Shea to help our seniors complete their applications. Our robotics team led by Mrs. Jones did a great job at North Kingston Holiday Robotics scrimmage. A representative from the Boys and Girls Club came to Shea and presented their workforce de development program. Mayor Studios is back tomorrow for Retake Picture Day. Our yearbook committee is back on. And in closing, on behalf of the Shea students and staff, I would like to wish you all happy holidays. Thank you so much. Next up, we have a representative from William E. Tolman High School. Hello everyone, my name is Maya Bishop. I am a senior at Tolman. Congratulations to the following Tolman student athletes who are honored as Key Spirit Award winners for the fall sports season. Melanie Castillo for girls volleyball, Miguel Mata for boys soccer, Giovanni Els for boys cross country, Emily Brown for girls cross country, Sarah Souza for girls tennis, Antonio Contreras for football, Jayla Bossier for girls soccer, and Naomi Barboza for cheerleading. Parent-teacher conferences were held on Thursday evening, November 17th. The conferences were very well attended by our Tolman parents and guardians. Murray Studios conducted a makeup day on Tuesday, December 6th to photograph any student who missed the original picture date or those who wish to have a second picture taken. The Brown University students who began a program in October to help our sophomore and junior students prepare for the PSAT and SAT examinations are now offering homework club to all students on Wednesday afternoons. Credit and content recovery programs began last Monday, November 28th. The content recovery program is designed to provide an intervention for students currently struggling with a core subject class. The credit recovery program is designed to help students earn credits for courses that they previously did not pass. The Tolman JROTC Color Guard will be presenting tomorrow morning at the Wreaths Across Country American Ceremony to be held at Goff Middle School. Thank you and have a good night, everyone. And we have representative from Jacqueline and Walsh School for Performing and Visual Arts. Hi, my name is Princess Apia, and I am a senior video and film major at the Jacqueline M. Walsh School for the Arts. Our mock trial team took their second win of the season against Mount St. Charles. They have one more regular trial in January, and they are looking forward to playoffs. Our dance students attended R.I.'s Ballet's Coppelia, and they are looking forward to seeing the Nutcracker next week. Our application deadline was Friday, and we are excited for audition week, which will be the second week in January. On Saturday, on Sunday night, students from our music program braved the cold and performed at Winter Wonderland in Slater Park. Today and tomorrow, 
student and teacher representatives are participating in the JA Inspire exhibit at the Convention Center. We are happy to be back in person for this event for the first time since the pandemic. Tuesday night, December 20th, is our winter culmination featuring all five majors. This event is free and open to the public. The doors open at 6 p.m. and the show is at 6.30 p.m. Thank you and happy holidays. Next on our agenda is public participation. I have four people, we have four people signed up. The first is Mr. Ron Beaupre. All members of our school community deserve to go to work and school and feel safe. School should never, school staff should never feel their lives are in jeopardy simply by showing up at work. No one should live it with the fear that sending their child to school or to an after school program may be placing them in harm's way. To ensure that our schools remain safe, it is important that school district policies and procedures assist those who are responsible for the health and safety of students and staff while they are at school, on school grounds, on their way to or from school, and involved in school-sponsored activities. Good evening. Thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity to speak. My name is Ron Bopri. I am a fourth grade teacher at Agnes Little Elementary School. I am the president of the Pawtucket Teachers Alliance, proudly representing the set, nearly 750 teachers, educational support staff, and related service providers serving the students in Pawtucket's public schools. I rise this evening to illustrate the fear and concern of Pawtucket Teachers Alliance members throughout the Pawtucket School Department, most pressingly at Shea High School. On November 17th, as you are all, all aware, during what was characterized as a drug bust at Shea High School, a handgun was discovered in a student's locker at the close of the school day. Principal Dr. Jacqueline Ash and her staff immediately notified authorities. Later that evening, in her daily update memo, memo Dr. Ash briefly addressed the incident and invited members of the faculty to a voluntary meeting the next morning where details of the incident were shared. To this day, no communication or acknowledgement from the central office or the superintendent of schools was provided to the faculty and staff regarding this incident. Less than one week later, on Tuesday, November 22nd, following the Tolman Shea Thanksgiving football game, an event that should have unified us as a community, a violent brawl broke out between students from Shea and students allegedly from Davies. Dr. Ash launched an investigation and identified all the Shea High School students who instigated and violent, violently participated in the fight and initiated, initiated disciplinary procedures, including a recommendation for suspension. Dr. Ash's efforts were met with opposition from the superintendent of schools, ultimately overturn, overriding the decision to suspend, stating that suspension was not appropriate as the incident occurred after school hours. Again, no communication regarding the brawl was issued from the central office, nor the superintendent of schools. Many teachers entered school the following Monday morning, unaware that the incident had even happened. Both incidents illustrate the great need for increased school safety measures to be implemented and the need for strict enforcement of Pawtucket School Department policies. Pawtucket School Committee Policy, JIC, titled Student Conduct Policy reads, and I quote, the school committee recognizes that acceptable behavior is essential for the development of responsible and self-disciplined citizens and for the provision of an effective school program. All professional staff members have a responsibility for consistency in establishing and maintaining an appropriate behavioral atmosphere. Every student is under the direction and control of the teachers and or principal in the school during the following periods of time. During school hours of a designated school day, while on school premises during the school day, while on any school activities, while being transported on a school bus paid for, paid for and or supported by the Pawtucket School Department funds 
to and from school at the time the child entered the school bus at the designated route pickup point and or left the school bus at the designated route drop-off point, end quote. Additionally, policy JICI, Title Zero Tolerance for Weapons and Violence states, quote, any stu student found to be in possession of a weapon or involved in an aggravated assault will immediately be suspended in accordance with the applicable due process provisions. During this suspension, the school district will take the necessary steps in determining any additional action, which may include long-term suspension. Decisions regarding the specific length of a student's suspension will be made at each, by each school committee or appropriate authority. Any student suspended from school cannot participate in school functions or be on school premises, end quote. Finally, policy JKD, titled Due Process Regulations for Governing Disciplinary Exclusions from stu of Students from School States, quote, the principal and or assistant principal are authorized to suspend a student for up to five days or less. The superintendent of schools or an assistant superintendent is authorized to suspend a student for up to an additional five days. This policy also includes the student suspension policy, which states, quote, the administration may remove a student from school for one, willful conduct which materially and substantially disrupts the right of others to an education. Two, willful conduct which endangers students, the school staff, or the property of the school, end quote. It is clear from the description of these two incidents, along with the countless recurring incidents of fighting and violent behavior at Shea and Tolman High Schools. Example, Instagram page, Tolman fights from last school year, 10 fights in three days, one including the use of brass knuckles as well as in our three middle schools, including student carrying a taser or stun weapon at Goff Middle School last week, allegations of three sexual assaults, one in each of the three middle schools, that the Pawtucket School Department must immediately provide increased safety measures and strict adherence to the policy set forth by this body. Attached to this testimony, which will be provided to the clerk for dissemination to the members of the committee, is a petition signed by Alliance members from all six of our secondary schools, Shea, Tolman, Je Walsh, Goff, Jenks, and Slater, requesting that the Pawtucket School Department and the Pawtucket School Committee take immediate action to ensure that our schools are safe and orderly, providing an environment conducive to teaching and learning, including but not limited to the establishment of a of school-based safe and orderly schools committee, committee is empowered to make and enforce policies and procedures to promote a safe and orderly learning environment. The establishment of a true alternative learning program that will address the social, emotional, and behavioral needs, health needs of students struggling to succeed in the traditional setting. An increase in the number of social, emotional support professionals to support students experiencing crisis a feasibility study to explore increasing safety measures, such as the installation of additional high visibility security cameras, metal detectors, or other surveillance equipment to ensure that violent behaviors are noticed in real time and response time is reduced, and to ensure that weapons do not enter our school buildings. And, stand ready and willing to work in partnership with the Pawtucket School Committee, the Pawtucket School Department Administration, the students and families we serve, and any other agency or partner deemed necessary to implement policies and procedures that will ensure our students and our staff attend safe and orderly schools where our students can exceed their highest potential. Thank you for your time. Next on the agenda is Michael Cookson. I will actually defer my comments at this time. I'm all set. Thank you. Um, next is Paul Jennings. 
I also yield back my time. Thank you. Rodriguez. Pawtucket, I'm Pawtucket is an amazing city with a rich history and cultural heritage. I feel so lucky to be a teacher here. The birthplace of the Industrial Revolution, Pawtucket was instrumental in creating the America we know and love today, comprised of hardworking, down-to-earth residents committed to creating a community for themselves and for their families. Throughout the last century, Tolman and Shea High School have been the bedrocks of our city and have been pillars on which our community stands. Many of our faculty and staff are former Tolman and Shea graduates, committed to giving back to the city that raised them, working together to help the next generation achieve its goals, united but divided, each with their own cultures and traditions. Like all families, we as a community have had our divides and our struggles. It's important to acknowledge this, to acknowledge the conflict between us and within our city. Issues in the city that have periodically spilled into our schools as violence, a trend we cannot allow to continue. In November, the residents of Pawtucket made the mon monumentous decision to fund a unified modern high school, something long overdue, which our students deserve. But change can bring challenges. We have to acknowledge and anticipate these challenges that will come from unifying the city. Careful planning will ensure that we are prepared for any and all issues that will undoubtedly arise from combining these two historic institutions. Burying our heads in the sand will serve no purpose but to exacerbate these problems. We have to be realistic and forward thinking and put time and effort into planning in order to have a safe and orderly transition to our new modern high school. As teachers, we want our students to have the best learning environment possible. And that's why I urge this committee to support our schools and create a committee focused on providing our students with safe and orderly schools. The reality is our students are amazing. They are wonderful people that deserve our focus and attention. The issue is the lack of resources, options and policies for students in situations we just can't adequately support. Thank you. Okay, um, next on our agenda is recognition. Um, we had this last week, but we will have it again. Um, because um, we need to recognize a uh, member, Mr. Knight, who I have truly enjoyed working with for the past eight years that I've served in this committee, who has given so much to this city of his time, of his energy, and of his effort. And it is because he truly cares about his city, the students in this city, the teachers in this city, and I was honored to serve with you, Mr. Knight. There is a plaque for you and sincere appreciation for your dedication and outstanding service to the Tucket School Department and children of the community. on our agenda is approval of previous meeting minutes. Then a motion by Ms. Vanola was seconded by Ms. Grant Larby. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries seven to zero. Next on our agenda is new business discussion action items, S through three ADA bathrooms, review, discuss, and act on schematic design submission to ride school building authority. Who's taking this item? Oh, sorry. Hi. Oh, oh, this is coming from the facilities. I'm sorry, Mr. Oh, Charbonneau. Yeah, thank you, Madam <laughs> Chair. It is, uh, it is actually not coming from facilities. It, it was determined best course of action was to bring straight to the full school committee um, due to the time sensitivity of this. Um, I apologize, uh, my coworker Chris Spiegel is out this week with COVID, so I'm going to be taking over for him. Uh, he has infilled me uh, quite a bit on this project, so I should be able to answer all of your questions. Uh, there is a chance that there's a question I'm going to need to answer, and I'll be able to report back to you. Um, so I'm here to report on the uh, four separate ADA uh, Americans with Disabilities Act bathrooms, uh, accessible bathrooms that we're looking to put into a sleeping station. Um, into uh, for the school. So um, the first one that we are here to explain is uh, in Pullman. Um, so there is an OCPC room in Pullman that uh, has more than enough space in it right now, and uh, they're looking to carve that out of space for an ADA uh, bathroom. Uh, I should note that in uh, each of these four bathrooms, they will come with an uh, ADA accessible toilet, a changing table, um, a sink area with some storage.
storage underneath as well as the cupboards that they store in to allow for full accessibility and the storage inside of them. Um, they're all based off of the design of that here at Grant, so we'll have that same kind of space up here. Um, so within this one, uh, we have chosen space, uh, special spaces for the girls' restroom and the girls' seating space. Uh, and if you have questions on individual ones, I'm happy to take them, but I'm going to run through all four of them and then kind of get back to the right. Uh, the second um, ADA accessible bathroom that we are looking to construct is um, in Curtis. Uh, we are going to be constructing just outside of the boys' and girls' restroom. Uh, again, same scenario where we'll have a training station, sink, uh, bathroom with curtains, uh, accessible handrails. <laughs> No work as well. Uh, this one will be built with a possible ad hall in it for a storage room adjacent to it on the opposite side so that if there is additional funding and it comes in a little bit low, we'll have the opportunity to build uh, some spaces. Can you clarify if this is the one on the preschool wing? Mm -hmm. it, yeah. it is? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, my question is where the lift is. Um, the markings where it says it would reach the table, it's just on the edge of the table. Is that a sufficient enough swing to move a child? Yeah, so I know it's really difficult to see. There's a dashed line right here that is a full five foot circle diameter. Um, and that's typical what you need for uh, wheelchair accessibility. They will do three point turns they need. So you have about five feet from uh, the edge of the table to the edge of the Right, but not the not the wheelchair accessible. If you move to the right of where the changing table is, that's the lift. Inside of it, yeah. And you see that the edge of the lift only meets the edge of the toilet and the edge of the table, which means there will be significant movement by <coughs> our personnel to get a child in that position. So mm -hmm. what I'm asking is that acceptable <coughs> um, Do you know off the top of my head i'm not sure i know that we came up with about uh three, three or four schemes for each of these and they were reviewed uh with some uh i want to say detail and mm -hmm. the lift. what's the lift is there lift and service so one thing i would also note is we're looking for a prior <coughs> submission for a schematic design and um, the team, once we go in for approval for schematic design, we do have the opportunity to continue to adjust the plans and uh, keep to make sure that everything is uh, perfectly laid out. So between this submission that we're seeking approval for and the DD submission that we'll be going for in a week or so, um, we have the opportunity to adjust. So we can definitely look into uh, where it's positioned currently and if it will be accessible the way it needs to be. Um, yeah, so because that's one thing. It's in the lift. The yeah. lift is that. Six foot, six and a half. This right here? Right. Uh, this, I believe, um, yeah, that is the lift. That is the lift, and it only goes to the edge of the toilet and the edge of the table. Go ahead, I Lisa. I do believe that came up. I uh, believe that was mentioned in our review of this rendering, and I do also believe that the lift is being moved to the other side of the thing to table so as to accommodate the toilet and the table. Okay, thank you. And then the third option is in present case. Um, in this option, we have the uh, same scenario where we have the lift and the changing table and the toilet and some paper uh, will work. This is taking up a little bit of a storage room, which uh, has been put on the side of the space, so we're taking it out there. And then our last transition is going to be inside of Barrier. And uh, within Barrier, they ended up taking over the janitor facility closet this year, but um, there was excess room inside of both of the restrooms that they were able to reclaim facility space, so they're still the same square footage of facility space. We are seeking the uh, other 
questions, but in return to them, we can use approval to submit the ride or to promote the ride. So, so the, the ADA special bathroom that we are creating is carved out of the existing custodial storage space, but we uh, added custodial storage space here and here. Uh, they were able to carve it out of both a little bit of the hallway and a little bit of the bathroom. So the bathroom had just like a larger uh, gift gathering area or a larger entry area to um, the secondary exit, which wasn't necessary. So they took over some of that space to be able to. Okay, so each room has a door. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so there were actually two doors in there. It would have been necessary for both. So we, uh, and this one was never used for the folks. So now they're just using, they're keeping the doors that they were used for the original one. Motion approved. Second. Motion approved by Mr. Charbonneau, seconded by Mr. Marino. Mr. Larby, any further discussion on this? Ms. Larby, please take a roll call. Ms. Benello? Yes. Mr. Charbonneau? Yes. Ms. Grant? Mr. Knight? Yes. Mr. Larby? Yes. Mr. Marino? Yes. Ms. Juby? Yes, the motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Um, I think the next item might be you as well, though. Um, Jenks and Annex acoustical panels review, discuss, and act on proposal from Ambient Sound for testing and design services. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the one we, that we have we have to table um, because Jenks is the one of the schools listed as incorrect. Uh, motion to table. Second. Yeah. Um, motion to table by Mr. Charbonneau, seconded by Mr. Moreno. Ms. Barbie, please take a roll call. Ms. Bonello? Yes. Mr. Charbonneau? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Knight? Yes. Mr. Larby? Yes. Mr. Moreno? Yes. Ms. Dooley? Uh, the item is tabled seven to zero. The next item is Shea Niask letter and immediate repairs update. As a review at the last meeting on Thursday, um, we um, heard from the facilities, um, the facility subcommittee had taken up this issue already that um, Shea was placed, and I don't want to use the incorrect wor word, but um, was given a warning by Niask that correct was put under warning status um, because of facilities needs in the building. Um, while not an extensive list, um, safety concerns around electrical, around HVAC, um, around roofing and auditorium, um, as well as windows were, were all mentioned as in need of repairs. Um, and the facility subcommittee discussed this. We discussed it at the last meeting and we talked about um, the highly desirable um, way of moving forward, which is to use our stage one and stage two that has already been completed and paid for um, and move forward immediately with going out to perform these repairs um, and perform this work. In order to do that, we need to um, use the funding source that is identified in stage one and stage two, which is the $220 million bond. Um, because that is how RIDE's approval works, that once you've completed it, you have identified your funding source. And if we are able to access the $220 million bond, we are able to immediately take up working on these, um, these items and hopefully see a very fast turnaround of them. However, um, accessing that $220 million bond does require, um, well, is uh, a conversation that on um, the facilities uh, uh, committee asked me to take on with the city. We had a meeting yesterday. Um, Dr. McWilliams was there, Ms. Devine was there, our attorney was there. Um, and uh, it was with um, the mayor, the mayor was unable to be there. So Mr. Zalazo was there instead. And I expressed to the um, mayor's team our desire to move forward immediately with these repairs for the Shea community, um, for the Shea students who are there, for the Shea faculty that are there, and in and the need to really move expeditiously to get this done. Um, we I also highlighted what we would risk with going slowly and not using the $220 million bond. We would risk having to go through a stage one and stage two again, which would be on an expense, 
we would risk possibly losing out on the ramped up state funding that we are getting, which is an additional um, 8% back from the state because we need to have moved through stage one and stage two already to get that. And I spoke about um, the, uh, the possible loss of accreditation, which would also be a loss of state and federal funding, as well as the effect on our students who would have um, their FAFSA funding possibly at risk if we did lose accreditation. So I explained all this to the mayor's team. Um, the mayor, as I said, was not in that meeting. So um, he communicated after the meeting. He said that, and so this is what I would said I would share with you all that, um, and I will, I will have um, Ms. List send out the exact emails to the full committee. It came right before this meeting. Um, he said that he is not opposed to the funding strategy but he would like to um, better understand the projects we would be tackling. And he mentioned sitting down um, with Ride about future submissions. So I'm not sure if something was lost in the past off of information because as I tried to express, we already have done our submissions to Ride. We've done our stage one and stage two. At this point, this committee is ready to act. We're ready to um, solicit bids and begin um, putting together a schedule to do this work. Um, obviously, some of these big ticket projects we would want to do this summer because they can't do them with students in the building. Um, so like I said, that is my most recent update as of just about right before this meeting when that email came out that um, the mayor said he is not opposed to the funding strategy, but does want another meeting with Collier's the superintendent ride. and ride. And as I said, I'm not sure why ride is included in that as we have moved past that. But that is where I am right now with that communication. And I said, I would report back at this meeting. Mr. Sharpen. Uh, when the mayor references not being opposed to the funding structure, what structure is he referencing? The so, 220? I think that the, so my email, which, um, the original reach out that I sent to him proposed that we would like to move forward, that I wanted to know if he had any objection to us moving forward with the $220 million bond, because that is the way that we can move immediately, as opposed to if we have to go through a stage one and stage two with ride, we will have to do, we, it would be very tough to turn around a stage one for February. So we might be talking about a stage one in October a stage two the following February and not being able to do any work on this school until I'm losing track of my years, 2024, 2025. So I, I made it very clear that that was the, that was the only, I didn't give any other options. So I said that that is how the committee at our last meeting, we talked about that would be our preferred mode of moving forward. As I said, I didn't give any other options. So when he, when he references, he never said the $220 million bond. He said this funding, and I will send the exact email, this funding approach. I, I, I appreciate the clarification. I just, I don't, I don't think we're any further than we were on this last meeting when you scheduled a meeting that you had yesterday. Um, and I, I think the, the problem is the timeline that, as you illustrated, if we don't access the 220 that's available to us, then we don't have any chance of completing meaningful repairs, renovations at Shea before NIAS comes back for their accreditation decision. Um, so we're talking about having to submit a stage one in February, if we don't access the 220, we're gonna go through the end of this month, I'm assuming, with no decision on that. I, I just, I worry that the timeline is tightening on us and we're, we scheduled a meeting, we had it. There wasn't any kind of resolution. It was to schedule another meeting at another time yet to be determined, or has that meeting been set? That meeting has not been set. So 
I want the easiest, cleanest approach would be to, for the city to give this body a not to exceed $20 million from the 220 that has already been approved by the voters and let us get to work on from the stage one and two that we currently have approved, let us get to work on doing $20 million worth of renovations at Shader to keep the accreditation. I, I think we're playing with fire with this accreditation if we start to drag this timeline out some. Mr. Knight. The problem that you've got is we've at this point allowed the city administration to interfere with the school department's operation. What you have is an approved bond by the voters of the city of Pawtucket for 200 and I think it was 224 to be exact. That was in fact voted on. There is approximately 100, 100 million left. So there will be after, after Baldwin. Shea, right, after Baldwin, but the Shea and Coleman um, renovations together were about 100 million. Okay. That's the budget. The estimated budget that that That's already been approved by the voters of this city. At this point in time, if we put a monetary limit on how much we tell them we're going to borrow to start this repair of the facade and whatever else we have to do at Shea, we risk having to go through stage one, stage two again, which will require a bond vote again. Uh, I think at this time we should just say, let's go ahead with the, with the repairs. There are emergency repairs. We do get run of, uh, yeah, um, money back from the state on it. Um, we're losing, if we don't do this, the possibility of losing accreditation for the kids, safety of the staff and the kids in the meantime, and we're losing a year at least. So my recommendation to this committee would be that we go forward with the shade repairs and don't put a monetary uh, cap on it even though we know we won't spend the entire $50 million at this point. Uh, but we've got the authority of the voters of the city of Pawtucket to do this. The mayor should not step in and say, well, I need to know more and I need to talk to Ryan. It's not his place. This is a Pawtucket School Department building. It is in the Pawtucket School Department's possession. We are responsible for its maintenance. We're responsible for its safety. Let's move forward with this because it is an emergency. Let's protect our staff and our students immediately. Thank you, Isabel. Um, so they the question for this committee is are we taking any action tonight are we um taking any vote i mean we we obviously can't take any action to actually go out to bid or anything like that because this isn't that's that's not how it's listed it's listed as in the ask letter and repairs update um so obviously i do not think that um i think that communication definitely needs to continue with the city on this but is the committee taking any official direction at this meeting or are we putting items on future agendas? Mr. Knight. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Attorney. Uh, one of the issues is that the phase one phase two project is specific funding. Mm -hmm. And so even if we were able to get funding from some other bucket of money that might be accessible to the school district, um, it would require us to restart phase one phase two, which is one of the issues we're trying to avoid. Yeah. And so the city does play a role it can allow us to access that bond money even though it is approved by the voters. And so we're at the point in identifying the urgency that that's in play here. Um, but the communication or rather the getting the city to still take the access that fund is a necessary step. Otherwise, we would have to redo a 
-hmm. Yeah. And so, as I said, I think that it is important to articulate that although this is an expense and it is a, a bonding expense out of the bonding money that the voters have approved, I really worked to articulate yesterday in the meeting all of the money that would be lost if we do not use this first approach, namely that we are going to do this work. At this point, we, we are not, this body is not going to risk losing accreditation for our students. So we have to do this work. However, even with us saying we have to do this work, NEAS could come back in November and say, you haven't even started it yet because if we can't use this 220 million, then we have to, in order to get reimbursed, go back out through stage one and stage two. So once again, I articulated that we have already expended and Ms. Devine can give me the exact number. Ms. Devine, how much do we expend on the stage one and stage two for? About $2 million has been expended already on a stage one and stage two. That money is completely lost and some design work was done, but that money is completely lost if we have to do another stage one and stage two. In addition, we have to then pay for another stage one and stage two. In addition, we lose the 8% additional funding and we risk state and federal funding. So all of that loss of funding is at risk if we do not act now as Mr. Knight articulated. Ms. Devine? Um, Mr. Knight and Mr. Lardy. We have a motion that we start the process immediately to repair, do the emergency emergency repairs that are needed due to the NEASC letter. And the dispatch has been in, uh, included in the bonding that's already approved. This is an emergency. We are allowed to act on it tonight because it is an emergency. Am I correct? The body can act on it, but the issue with proceeding without access to the that bond money is we still have to go through city. We still have we still have access to that money. It's already guaranteed. It, it was approved by the voters. But the yes, it was. Finished. But then they issue the bond, that's right. But they would have to do that. We have to make sure that that gets done before we start any work. Otherwise, we don't have money to, to pay folks to do that work, uh, even on an emergency basis. If we do do it from another pool of money, if those were available, it would require us to essentially restart those phases that we talked about phases two, which would be the loss of the, the, the work that's already been done. Okay, this, we're all in agreement that this is an emergency situation. My question becomes this, if this is an emergency that we must do, we have approval of the voters, the city at that point has already gotten approval for that binding, they're withholding it to be, I don't know what you want to say, but the city thinks they can just say, nope, we're not going to do it. And our kids are going to suffer? Not in my lifetime. I made a motion. I'd like somebody to second it. That we move forward on um, this progress, this process immediately by seeking bids, et cetera, et cetera, for the re emergency repairs. I'll, I'll second the motion for discussion purposes. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, no, I, I was wondering, and, and, uh, and thank you for the information. Um, it seems like if we want to move urgently, it, that we're really, unfortunately, at the mercy of whether or not the city wants to cooperate, um, unless there's a, another option on the table.
things that you have stated um, that are in risk and jeopardy of losing if you don't act accordingly. Um, other than that, I, I'm not sure what, what we can do without the, the city really cooperating. I think we need to respond to the mayor in writing, specifically what we lose, which is accreditation, which means we have high schools that has no value and it has no value to our students. And if he wishes, ask him to clarify what he means by being part of RIDE in the future, ask him to clarify that because we need to know what he's looking to do. Um, but I do believe, you know, and I'll stand with the others, I agree, we need to do something. RIDE told us we couldn't do it. Then they sent us a letter that said, do it or else you lose, <coughs> you lose everything. And now the mayor, is saying, well, I agree, but I want to be part of the future. So a modifier of they, Ride didn't send us the letter. No. No, okay. So originally Ride yes. sent us a letter that said we couldn't do we any can't do any work on Shay. Yes. Correct. Yes. So, so Ride told us so. to put Shay and Tolman on hold for all repairs. Correct. The letter from NIASC is the one you're referring to that said we must do repairs. So the okay. NIASC says we must do them or we lose the accreditation, mm -hmm. which we would have done them had RIDE said we could. Mm -hmm. So we need to clarify and I think we need to put it in writing with the attorney's assistant mm -hmm. um, to outline all of these things. And and get it to them and ask for a response by the end of the year. And I do think that one of the things that came up in the call, once again, the mayor was not on the call, but with Mr. Zalazo, what one of the things that came up were questions about the exact scope of work that we were looking to do. And as I said, we, I know I knew the big ticket items, but he mentioned um, lockers were referenced um, and whether or not that would be in there. I said, I believe we would just be looking at immediate safety upgrades, but perhaps being able to better clarify those items and um, give a rough estimate would be helpful. Um, Mr. Charbonneau and then Mr. Knight, I think I saw your hand out of the corner of my eye. Okay, Mr. Charbonneau. Mr. Charbonneau, you okay with that? They put us on hold and discussion of unified high school. That was their hold. Okay, Mr. Charbonneau. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I, I would just, I, Mr. Lobby, I agree wholeheartedly with you. And I, before I, I expand on that, I, I, just to level set, right. We had a plan to fully renovate Shed that was approved on multiple occasions. And then once the conversation about a unified high school came, that's when Ride said, okay, we're going to stop spending money at Shea until we decide on a unified high school. So I don't think Ride is against us doing renovations at Shea. Um, but having said that, I agree with Mr. Lott, a formal letter from this committee to both the mayor and the city council requesting that they provide access to the, uh, to the existing bond um, so that we can meet some of these immediate repairs. Um, I don't think we put a dollar figure on it, but I think we can articulate certainly from our stage one and two that we've already done those big ticket items that will be meaningful and impactful. Um, and I think we sent it to the council and the mayor requesting that they take immediate action on it and, and then see when we have a future council member sitting right here, Mr. Marino for your first oh, meeting. Yeah, we, do. <laughs> we can just send him with the letter. <laughs> Right, and, and of course, outlining the, you know, the consequences of not, mm -hmm. of not acting. So, um, so I know we have um, a special meeting on Monday. 
Um, there, uh, there are obviously we, there's a, there's a current motion on the table. Um, so we couldn't take another motion to send a letter, but the two options would be for you to authorize um, me to sign a letter after legal has drafted it, articulating what we've spoken about. The second option would be to have that letter drafted and put on the next agenda on Monday. Um, but like I said, that is only if a motion is put on the table for a letter. So, so the, the, the current, um, the current motion is to move forward with prepare with the emergency repairs for health and safety and send a letter requesting requesting that we access the bond money. I think, we, I think we've moved forward as much as we have the plans, we have everything available to us. I, I think if you wanna pull that portion of it from your motion, Mr. Knight, and okay. so, have it just be the letter. We have to, we have to move forward with the action. Mm -hmm. An action has to be taken by this committee today. Agreed. Now, sending a letter isn't an action. That's in the future. Because regardless of whether they say they're giving us the money, they're giving us the money. Let's be realistic. It's been approved by the voters. They have an obligation to fund the schools properly. Doing an emergency repair is funding the school property properly. What's the issue? The mayor doesn't want this. <laughs> the next action, if you're looking at the next action, even on an emergency basis, is to make our RFP system fully capable to work. I don't see how we can do that without the funding of the school. And so the motion as it stands right now, even as amended, uh, would be problematic but as far as ensuring that we have funding for the school. Um, one has to go before the other. That approval's already there. The money's already been bonded. It hasn't been taken out of the bond that was done. So the money's there. The mayor can say, oh, no, 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 no. It's there. Okay. So there's a, Ms. Grant. Motion to send a letter to the mayor and the city council. Mr. Knight's motion is on the table right now. So we can call. We can call the vote on Mr. Knight's motion, which I would like to clarify is to move forward with emergency repairs and send a letter. That is the current motion. It has been seconded. Thank you, Ms. Manila. I will do just that. Um, Ms. Barber, will you please um, call the vote? Ms. Manila? No. Mr. Charbonneau? No. Mr. Gr Ms. Grant? <laughs> Mr. Knight? Yes. Mr. Larvey? No. Mr. Marino? No. Ms. Juby? No, the motion fails six to one. Um, so now we can have Ms. Grant? Well, I'd like to now make the motion to send a letter to the city council and the mayor asking them 
whether we have a meeting or, or um, it's before the end of the year um, to decide on what will, you know, just kind of get more clarification in regards to Shay and that it's an emergency and that we need to uh, get this done as soon as possible. So um, I, I um, as I said, would you want me to draft that and sign it, articulating those points in consultation with legal, or do you want that letter on the Monday agenda? I, 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 I would feel confident. I, I feel like you mentioned a few things that I hadn't mentioned originally, as in possibly asking for a meeting. Um, the original letter that was referenced was to articulate the need, um, ask for the funds, and that's it. That that was that was the original that we articulate the need and we and we, and we respectfully ask for um, for for confirmation that we have access to the funds. So I feel like that's a pretty simplistic letter for me to think about drafting, but you added a few more ideas in there and I want to make sure that I don't write something that necessarily doesn't reflect what you're saying. Well, I think you need to, um, you know, kind of focus on the urgency. Okay. You know, I think um, the way it was interpreted from one to another, um, mm -hmm. I, I think the urgency wasn't there. Mm -hmm. um, whether it be his staff or, mm -hmm. um, and I think we really have to, you know, make sure that they understand what the urgency is in regards to this and that we really do need to know mm -hmm. um, what we have to do okay. um, so we can get approval as soon as possible so we can move forward. Okay, so a letter that articulates the urgency spells out the, um, the need, the need. Mm -hmm. and ask for the funding source. Yeah. Oh, the repercussions as well. Spells out need and repercussions. I'm going to be checking with Ms. Barbara afterwards. So the question, we have that letter that's fine, but that does not ask for clarification of what they said about meeting with Ride in the future. Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, are we going to ignore that? Or? Well, well I, I, I'm, not, I'm not following. Who said anything about meeting with, with Ride in the future? Well, no, the, the, the mayor did. That was the mayor's speech. The mayor asked for, if I'm correct, Dr. <coughs> McWilliams um, asked for a meeting. And um, you were also, did you also see that email? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so the, it, the, the action step from the email was to set up a meeting with the superintendent's office, the Collier staff, and a loop-in ride, and the mayor's office. So I'm not saying that that meeting right exactly doesn't. Yeah, I don't know if that was implied or not. Um, but uh, so there's been a motion to send a letter. I, I just need to have clarification if if the committee is confident with me sending that letter. Um, once it's been reviewed by legal or if this committee wants to then see and approve that letter. So the current motion is just that we send a letter. It's been seconded. I, I think the time sensitivity of this thing, I, I trust your judgment to capture the points and the, and the feelings of this committee. I think everybody's had a chance to weigh in in the discussion of it. Um, I mean, for me, it's a, it's as simple as do we, can we access the 220 million that's remained? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not so sure what the big discussion is about. Mm -hmm. it, there's money on the table. It's been earmarked for this school. There's plans that have been drawn that have been approved every step of the way. And now we're at a point where somebody's telling us you're risking your accreditation if you don't do this. <laughs> and we're saying, let's have another meeting and figure out where we're gonna get the funding. We know where the funding, we have the funding. Um, so there's a motion, it has been seconded. Um, I'm not hearing any specific need for the letter to come back before the committee. So um, 
but obviously the, the committee will be sent the letter when it's sent. You'll be copied on. Yes, Ms. Vanilla. Can we ask for a response by a certain time? I think we, we can ask for an immediate response as, as soon as possible. The issues at the church at the sale would only ask for us to say that. As in walk to school? No, no, no. Oh, oh the letter? Yeah. The letter was sent to the mayor. Okay. Yeah. No, the full letter, the 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 actual letter itself was sent to Shay. In addition, um I sent a an a an email explaining um that the this to it in order to start the meeting um explaining the the funding and everything in writing um but like i said this would be a formal letter sent to um the mayor and city council um after consulting with legal seeing no further discussion miss barbara please take a roll call vote miss Spinola? yes mr charbonneau yes miss grant yes Ms. Warby? Yes. Mr. Marino? Yes. Ms. Duby? Yes. The motion carries six to zero, and the committee, um, I will be sure that you are also copied on that letter when it is sent. Okay. Um, the next item is approval of funding for Shea Masonry Stabilization Project. Evening um, on at the facilities uh, committee on October 19th and a subsequent school committee meeting on October 27th, uh, we had uh, the committee had approved emergency masonry repairs um, based on immediate need to repair the masonry parapet at the Shea High School. Sorry, there's a bug. It's still there. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> and it was uh, the masonry parapet at Shea High School in the interest of the student safety. At these meetings, it was proposed that we would proceed with funding this work under emergency approval, immediate health and safety, which is an approval mechanism de designed for emergency repairs with the standing housing aid reimbursement. However, we have been informed by RIDE in subsequent discussions that they will not grant an emergency approval for work at Shea while there is over the $46 million AMOC approval for Shea under the 234. So what was essentially going to be the bonded approvals, um, they're saying that those approvals are still there if we have a new high school and wouldn't be using per se, we would be using Shea, but in other words, they're not, grant, they're not saying use the funds, they're just saying you have approval for those building repairs. Yep. So I was just going to ask at this time, without a clear direction, if the bond funds are available in the 234 approval, um, or if the remaining balance could be is going to be part of the unified school project. The recommendation at this time is to utilize the capital reserve reserve to submit for housing aid reimbursement via the standard process. In other words, it won't be paygo, um, but we would need to use our our capital reserves, the school department's capital reserve funds to get this project done. And I believe it's something under 500,000 because I know that that's the emergency repair. Um, that was the one that was on the roof there. Motion to approve on the table by Mr. Charbonneau. It was seconded by Ms. Vanolo. Any discussion, Mr. Charbonneau? So, Melissa, just to close the loop a little bit, Mr. Knight's previous comments about proceeding with emergency repairs, mm -hmm. Ride has already told us they're not reimbursing us for emergency repairs at Shea while we have $46 million in approval. In approval. So yeah, not talking about the bond, just the approval. Right. Cause yeah, so, right. so there's two things. So, so, they don't, so the emergency repairs, and we did this, I think last June we did some emergency repairs, but at the, the, we did the uh, annex, we didn't have any approval for the annex. So last June, I remember we submitted some security um, and some door replacements. The reason they granted that as an emergency, we used capital funds and then they gave us the, they're giving us the housing aid back when we're done. 
that's the same process. What they were saying is when I submitted that letter, they were like, we'll get back to you. And then once the voters had passed the new high school, they were like, well, you're not going to be using that approval. They weren't talking the bond. They were only talking the approval. Yeah. Okay. So that's why we're asking right now, since we don't know if we have access to the bond, if we could use 500,000 in the capital. And then that would be reimbursed to us once the project is done. It would be reimbursed to us next year because it's under a million dollars. That's that, whatever that power report, yeah. Anything about call? Mr. Charbonneau? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Larby? Yes. Mr. Marino? Yes. Ms. Juvie? Yes, the motion carries six to zero. Um, thank you. The next is RFP award for PSC shirts, jackets, gloves, and hats. Oh. Quotes to supply shirts for employees, all employees of the district, jackets, hats, and gloves for maintenance and custodial staff for an RFP. Bidders were able to bid on all items together or each individually. We only received one response to our RFP and that was from Spirit Recognition, they're a local company in Pawtucket uh, on Central Avenue. We, uh, they were gonna provide us, they gave us prices on PSD logo short sleeve polo shirts, uh, $14.50 for a small all the way up to double XL and anything above that would be $19.50 each. They also gave us prices on the jackets with the PSD logo also for our maintenance and custodial staff, $134 from small to 3X and anything up above that would be 146.50. I recommend at this time that school accept a proposal from Spirit Recognition and award them for the, um, the jackets and the short sleeve polos. They did not bid on the hats or the gloves. And a motion approved by Ms. Manolo, seconded by Ms. Grant. Um, Ms. Manolo. Yeah. Isn't that um, the same quote as we had? The one. We, we, we've done business with them before, at least my department has, plus other departments have gone out and, and had shirts from them. The quotes are pretty close to what we've done work with them before, so they've been in line for more. Yeah, um, they sound yeah. very similar. Ms. Barbary, please take a roll call. Ms. Vanilla? Yes. Mr. Charbonneau? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Larvey? Yes. Mr. Marino? Yes. Ms. Duby? Yes, the motion carries six to zero. The next item is installation of flooring in Curvin McCabe, Pullman, and Barrier. That would be me again. Uh, we sought out proposals from vendors uh, through the MPA number 364 to do floor installation. <laughs> there were 14 classrooms at Barrier, two at Curvin, and a music room at Tolman. The original flooring at Barrier was about 20 to 25 years old, but it actually had held up pretty well until COVID time. And that's when we all know we started eating in the classrooms. So it started damaging the carpet and, and it's just stuff that we just don't feel like we can clean further and I would like to replace it. Um, the two classrooms I'm doing at Curvin were the two that weren't done last summer because I believe we did six. So we're doing the final two there. And then there's a music room at Tolman in the back and I believe that carpet up there is probably close to 40 years old. Um, I walked through all of these areas with four vendors off the MPA where they did all their measurements. Um, we received back two bids, one being the lowest from authority flooring for $98,560. This work would be done between January and June, as long as everything is in. So Chris Silva will take it over. At that point, what he's going to do is need to coordinate with them and tell them we have a break in February, we have a break in April, but we're also going to have to probably do some Friday nights, some Saturdays, so our guys can at least get in there on a Sunday and put everything back, even if it's only only one that they do. So this was based majority, probably half of it on second shift labor. Um, so like I said, authority flooring was the lowest of the two bids, $98,560. Casey Maintenance Incorporated came in at 118 21613. It's my recommendation to approve, uh, approve the proposal from Authority Flooring for the sum of $98,560. And a motion to approve by Ms. Vanilla was seconded by Mr. Larby and Ms. Grant. Ms. Vanilla. I can't get my screen to reduce so I can read what I'm supposed to be reading, but you're putting carpeting in barrier. 
thing, but so I'm, I'm, re I'm, re I'm, I'm redoing carpeting again in Varia <laughs> because the rooms are quite larger than, than a lot of the rooms throughout the districts and the ceilings are a little bit higher. My fare is like we had in our media centers. I didn't want to put carpet in there. My fare was echo. And that's what we've had in times when we put tile in. So that's why I'm doing the 14 rooms there as carpeting. Obviously, I'm doing the carpeting at Tolman because it's a music room to kind of help with the sound. But I'm going to do the two at Kerbin. I'm going to do those with the VCT tile. And I've told teachers if they ever have issues, you know, they can just talk to their principal if they would need me to get them a bigger, you know, a fur rug or something. So kind of cushion it. I can do that for them also. Okay. Thank you. And motion to approve. It's been seconded. Ms. Barbie, please take a roll call. Ms. Pinello? Yes. Mr. Charbonneau? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Larby? Yes. Mr. Marino? Yes. Ms. Juby? Yes. The motion carries six to zero. The next item is Kurt and Blanc, Curtis, sorry, Curtis Lines RFP approval. Uh, Chris Silver uh, went out with an RFP for proposals to remove old shades and install installation of new shades in 10 classrooms in Curtis. It's the back end of Curtis where the shades are on like an old rail system and they're probably existing from the building. The shades themselves were probably like an old aluminum and they've seen better days. So Chris and I went in there, inspected out. He walked the building with, a, with at least, I think, four vendors. He received two proposals back. It'll be to demo the old ones out and put the new shades in. They would be like a manually operated roller clutch shade that has the, that has the metal chain on it. Uh, we had two proposals from uh, Lonegren Incorporated at $6,847 and Walker, Walker Specialties at $11,890. This would all be second shift work, uh, or if they can get the material in, in time, we'll hopefully be able to do this in the February vacation. This, uh, my recommendation would be to accept DM Lundgren proposal for removal and installation of shades at Florida Curtis for the sum of $6,847. A motion approved by Ms. Manola, seconded by Ms. Grant. That were there when I went to school? They're, they're existing. They're, they are. Um, <laughs> Ms. Barba, if you please can take a roll call. Ms. Manola? Mr. Sharpner? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Larby? Yes. Mr. Marino? Yes. Ms. Juby? Yes. Motion carries six to zero. The next is award of Kelms Portland Pottery. Hi, good evening. Um, on November 9th, uh, we went out to bid for re replacement of ceramic kilns for Goff Middle School, Shea High School, and Tolman High School. The bid uh, was for three Scott KM 1027 ceramic kilns or equivalent product. The awarded vendor would be responsible for the removal and disposal of old kilns, furnish and install with appropriate compliance the new kilns. Installation would include training for our PSD staff uh, at each of the three schools for proper operation um, of the equipment. No bids were received on uh, the closing day of November 22nd. Therefore, we went, uh, we had an agenda sent out for the closing date of December 8th. Only one bid was received from Portland Pottery uh, in the amount of $15,909.90. Uh, the amount was for all three schools and includes freight, installation, kiln removal, installation uh, of equipment, electrical and ventilation, uh, kilns with touch screen, travel time, tutorials and training. Uh, I do have to say that um, our, our three kilns, especially the one at Tolman has, each, has reached its um, end of service capacity. Uh, and Shay and Goff are also reaching that. So the um, recommendation is that the award be of the service contract be given to Portland Pottery in, in the supply in the amount of $15,909.90. Motion approved by Ms. Manolo, seconded by Mr. Larby. Ms. Manolo. Um, yep. Couple questions. What's the warranty on that? Yep, the, uh, good question. So the warranty is two years from date of purchase on each case. Okay, and the second question is, what's the life on the kilns that JMW uses? Uh, JMW's kiln is still in good condition, so we, we're not replacing that as of right now. Okay. It's been okay. taken care of, yeah. Um, and these items, these kilns, they're movable when they're, so... They can be uninstalled. They can yeah. be uninstalled and then move to another location. Right, with the electrical and ventilation. Sorry, please take a roll call. 
Ms. Danolo? Yes. Mr. Charbonneau? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Larvey? Yes. Mr. Marino? Yes. Ms. Juvie? Yes. Motion carries six to zero. Next is award of student information systems contract. Dr. Williams? Yes. So good evening, everyone. We have before you um, a recommendation to award and move away from our current uh, student information service provider to a new one um, with the changing demands and metrics for school, school accountability and the need for a robust student information system um, as part of our strategic plan. Three, which um, we then proceeded with a full uh, review team of many different stakeholders, administrators, teachers, um, all staff level, clerks, paraprofessionals were um, invited to participate, held presentations, sessions, demos, focus groups. And um, you can see, oh, first I would like to say that unfortunately Hirsch was not able to be here tonight, otherwise we would be bringing this forward. Um, he is celebrating his mother's 90th birthday party. So um, I wanted to make sure that I shared that with you. Um, so you can see that the three awards, the current uh, provider that we're using, um, it's important to notice that the one that we're recommending, which is Power School, once uh, we looked at those three and had the presentations, the demos, and all the um, review of that by all the stakeholders, and we narrowed it down to the one that we believe is to be the most robust for a robust for many different reasons. Um, we, uh, Hirsch did go back and forth with the vendor and incorporated some additional things. So in the other two, you do not see those additional. So some of the additional pieces that were um, included would be a um, conversion, a, an extensive data conversion for um, what he's looking for is 20 years of data. So that's an excess course uh, cost that's incorporated into that second um, into power school and also performance matters, which is a, um, a tool for assessment and um, also additional PD. So moving into a, a system like this, which um, we believe is a strong interface that will take us uh, down the road many, many years, um, we would want to make sure we have a quite a bit of professional learning and development for staff. So we um, included an increased number of PD. So those are the three items why you see that that um, that recommendation is at best. I will, I do want to state too that if um, the agreement, if the school committee approves this and uh, we have a signed agreement before December 31st, we'll have a cost saving of close to $100,000. Um, can we just clarify how much money did we set aside out of ESSER three for About this? Two million. Okay. And we have, and because so, I see that this is a three year, this is listed out as three years, but I know yes. ESSER three sunsets at a certain point. Yes, but if we make an agreement to sign into a contract, that would still all that would be um, invoiced and covered. We can use all ESSER yes. three to cover this. Right? Yes. Okay. Just wanted to check. Okay. So, so with that being said, we'll have more than enough that's allotted in ESSA, and we'll also be able to do all those additional, the PD and things like that. So my, the recommendation is to um, award uh, the contract to the Power School for Student Information System. And a motion to approve by Mr. Larvey. seconded by Ms. Grant. Discussion, moving on. So when we, Bring the system online. Are we going to put more people in our IT to? So um, that would be the goal. We also incorporated part of that funding would be, um, it, well, it would be for a limited period of time that you have, you know, the ESSA funds. Um, and we also could bring in a consultant too as well. Why a consultant oh, and not a but we what might be able to do because probably want to do we might want to do both. It really would be up to Hirsch. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah because we are short staff. Yeah, I, I would think that we would be looking to do that, which would be, you know, that it would be covered in those funds, but only for those two years. So you'd have to look past that. Right. Okay. Mr. Sharina. Uh, why, why are they so much more? Then, so, so I mean, initial the, year Skyward seventy eight thousand power schools at five hundred and forty one thousand. So you have to understand we already did our integration with Skyward. We're we're operating with that student information system now. So that's just our annual, um, our annual fee. Right, but it says vendor cost including data conversion. So you, I'm assuming as well, I'm there would be this, no data conversion with that okay, company. So, but okay, so they have. They're four hundred thousand, four thirty more than Skywood, and two hundred thousand more than Aspen. So incorporated into um, Power School is the extra PD. So those dollars are incorporated into that. In addition, um, an extra data migration that I spoke to that Hirsch wanted to bring over for to make sure that we had twenty years of data. So that would be an additional cost in addition to performance matters. So none of those three, once we narrowed it down and the selection um, by far of all the uh, stakeholders was to go with power school, um, then those, he went on into discussions with them about adding additional PD, additional um, cost hours for data migration and also performance matters. Right. I, I guess my concern is, and I get Esser will cover the initial three year invoice. But year four and five, it would be it would be um, so year four. So the additional years would be uh, well. Year three power school is one hundred and fifty thousand more than Skywood and sixty thousand more than Aspen. And and the and the nature of those the systems are uh, significantly different. Um, we do I guess a, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. What's, what's okay, the difference sure. for? Sure. So maybe I could have um, some of the staff that would, you know, like to participate in sharing out. I know special ed, RTI, MTSS, none of those uh, things that we're able to do at this point. Um, Dr. Andrew, did you want to speak to the special ed portion? Sure. So respects to special populations, one of the um, cons with respects to Skyward is if we think about an individual education plan, uh, the individual education plan will provide specific frequency service times of hours for specific service providers. And unfortunately, all that information is encapsulated in what we refer to as a PDF document. The aggregate information is not available. Uh, this particular platform, PowerSchool, which formerly per, uh, was purchased a former program that we used to use called TyNet, which is very popular in the world of, uh, in this, in this genre, uh, which is what special educators would prefer, related service providers would prefer, and our own team would prefer. So what that's going to provide us the ability to do is really look at the analytics to really assist with projections, forecasting, and programming in the future. So for special education purposes, this is a huge win for our department. Um, and we would really love to move forward in that direction. And I just want to mention too, I don't know, Sarah, did you want to speak to any of the interfacing, the in, any of your team teachers? Some of that maybe may get above my, okay. my level of capital. I'm just <laughs> the price difference of the three is is glaring. And for our district to be able to sustain this once the SM money dries up, we don't ever want to go backwards in three years. Is all I'm saying. Um, I talked to Mr. Vine earlier. By any chance, did you find out how much we paid initially? Um, so I tried to, I went back into the system and um, are we talking about from 10, 12 years ago? Yep. Yeah. So it was kind of, it was about. Modules. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't think that we installed them all at once because it was, um, it was 
probably, and again, I just arrived here when that was going on, but I looked at the Phoenix. Um, so yeah, those were those were the initial years, and then you know it's been consistently, um, you know, for current dates, I can say, and uh, you know, we have the the alert system through Skyway. We have the SIS, um, and for those two things, it's about seventy-seven thousand dollars. Is it possible to get a comparison of what Skywood offers us and what the new programs offer us? We could get that. Um, I, I I think that um, the, there was a review team that looked at those items. I don't know if we want to. As I said with, with Mr. Sharman, I don't know if it's going to um, go more um, into details, but we could, we could, uh, yeah. I, I know that from a parent perspective, is it writing? <laughs> um, uh, from a parent perspective, um, I hear regularly from parents that Skyward is difficult to navigate. Um, I know right now we're scheduling conferences for our students and the way that you go about that and how you have to put in for the times and the way that you get the emails about it's it's clunky you know i and it's one of the only kind of constants of my, i've had kids in the system for in the system i've had kids in our schools for nine years and that has remained a uh, constant with kind of this older interface and so i don't know i i think that there's good reason to look to expand it and um, I'm in support of this, but uh, there's there's a motion on the floor, yeah. Um, but Ms. Benold, do you want to still have that emailed out from on like the difference, the comparison between the two? Well, either way, I'd like to know. Mm -hmm. Okay. What it's giving us? Mm -hmm. How much bang for the buck? Ms. Barber, can you please make a note for Ms. List to send that out to the committee? Mm -hmm. And then can you please call the vote? Ms. Spinello? Yes. Mr. Charbonneau? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Larvey? Yes. Mr. Marino? Yes. Ms. Dubey? Yes, the motion carries six to zero. The next item is approval of budget transfers. Oh. Um, to you until today, um, but I keep that on as a um, a standard action, um, just in case, because sometimes they pop up at the last minute and then we have to wait um, to have another meeting. So the first one is from the special education department and it's a transfer out of um, from the transportation special ed line of 65,000 to psychologist services of 65,000. Um, and the second one is, is an error on my part, or it might not have been an error. I may have mistakenly thought that we were gonna purchase the athletic equipment and then have someone install it. So I'm asking for the 16,000 that we previously got approval to move to athletic equipment, to move it to purchase service because we just awarded a contract for the person to um, uh, install the clock and purchase it at the same time. So in new color, you call that a purchase service, even though there's a piece of equipment involved. If we bought just the equipment and then we hired a different person to install it, then it would be a piece of equipment and then the install service. So that's just a, a correction on my end to tr transfer it to purchase service. And that's for 16,000. Motion to approve the budget transfers from Ms. Benolo, seconded by Ms. Grant. Ms. Barbara, please take a call. Ms. Benolo? Yes. Mr. Sharpenham? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Larvey? Yes. Mr. Marino? Yes. Ms. Dubey? Yes. The motion carries 6 0. We are now in discussion items. We have um, several. So um, I'm going to do A, B, and C individually, and then we can take D through I as we typically do as a, as a, as a group. Um, so A is school building budgets. Uh, Ms. Benolo asked for this. No, Ms. Grant asked for this to be, sorry. Ms. Grant asked for this to be on the agenda. If you want to speak to it or you just want to call it Ms. Devine. Oh, I do want to speak okay. to it. Um, I asked um, Ms. Devine if she would be able to present tonight um, in regards to the individual school building budgets. 
Um, the reason for this is um, I just want to understand better how, how it works. Um, a couple of weeks ago, there was an article in the paper, um, Curve and McCabe, the kids needed toys. Um, they were fortunate enough that one of the teachers uh, um, had a, a connection um, and the students were able to receive a donation. Um, however, we have some schools that might not have those connections. And, you know, I think our teachers and our students, uh, I'm, our teachers should be aware that um, there are items that they can go to their principals and discuss, um, along with funds that we, the school committee, have also given to each school this year. Um, so I just wanted Ms. Um, Devine to kind of touch on it a little bit to just kind of clarify how it actually works. Okay, so each year um, we've been, since we've transitioned to a new system, um, Tyler Munis, uh, we've changed a couple of the steps, but we basically, we tried to do it inside the Munis system and, it, and it's a little bit um, overwhelming for people. So what we have done the last few years in, in previous years is we send out worksheets uh, to the various principals and department heads, and then they can submit um, what their needs are. And so what we do is, you know, a budget is something that, and we hold trainings, but a budget is not a once a year task. It, it, it's an all year ongoing planning process. So a lot of times when I get up here each year and present the budget to you, there are sections in the budget that I say, you know, I base it on history. Um, so we send those sheets out. We usually do that. We're, we're getting ready now in my office. Um, Jason, who has um, helped me uh, transform some of the um, manual processes into automated processes. Um, we get those sheets, we send them out, and we let um, each department and building principal know, you know, pretty much to stay in the realm of what they had last year because we currently don't know what our funding is next year. With that being said, once we do find out and if we were not done with the process, we reflect back with them and say, you know, if there are any additional um, needs and things like that, but keep your wish list. This past summer, uh, we held a training for administrators. We did it over multiple days. People had an opportunity to come. They weren't forced to. Um, I think the majority of them attended. And for a couple who really couldn't attend, they called me up and had questions. But we also have a presentation um, that was put together that um, Jason put together and I, I had presented along with him in talking about how to go about and planning your budget and what the state law means about site-based management. So each school principal has a budget at their school level and at their, the department heads at the department level. And they go through and they allocate the money as they see fit. My, I don't get in, it is not, I don't get into that minutiae part of, hey, Joanne, you're the principal at the school. You need to go ask Jay, who's one of, they do that themselves. It's their budget that they push forward for a recommendation to the superintendent who then pushes the budget forward for a recommendation to the school committee. So they all have an allocation. What I try to give is helpful hints like nursing supplies. We typically, um, and this has been an ongoing thing, we probably have to increase it. This is uh, typically $3, $3.25 per enrolled student in your building. So we try to um, encourage the principals to think along those lines to ask their staff for some you know items that they may want similar to the 750 um, k initiative that you all have approved um, so that is how they go about um, building the budget we are still working on what the requirements are i have a purchasing procedures um, document um, i actually it's a booklet that I pass out every year, I pass it out um, the quoting process. I will tell you, um, it has improved. Some of the um, longtime principals here reached out and they kind of um, get the process. But then when you get new principals, you have to teach all over again, which is fine. I love doing that. Um, but it is not a one time. And we made that clear at the summer training. This isn't a one time thing. When you through the year, as you see that you may need something, you should be jotting that down. So when budget season comes again, or if somebody's asking for something, these are the things that you should have somewhere in a notebook that you're thinking about putting in your next year budget.
but essentially the state law says that building principals are supposed to have an allocated pot of money that they build based on working with their um, school teams um, and staff and, and what the needs are that align with the goals of the district, the strategic plan and the goals. So that's basically how it's done. We do, I'll probably be rolling out um, worksheets and then giving them until the end of January. We usually have presented anywhere from early March to sometime in April. We get the budget to the mayor by the end of April. Um, once those sheets come back, I put them all together. I then meet with the assistant superintendents and the superintendent. We then go through what the needs are at the schools at those same times that they're doing the operations piece of budget, like what they need in their school for supplies, office um, testing, uh, fees, things like that, um, testing for the uh, AP exams at the high school level, um, graduation, um, rentals, things like that. While they're doing that, they're also communicating out to the assistant superintendents possibly what their needs are for the classrooms, meaning teacher or staff or, um, but that's basically what the process is. We haven't mastered it because you do have change of staff all the time. So you're trying to improve something You say, hey, maybe if I do it this way, it might be a lot easier for them. So it is, it is a continually learning process. Love going through it. Always open my door and phone calls for, for any questions that anybody has. I directly take those calls myself um, here to help, but again, it's just mastering that you can't do it just at this time. Like you should be planning all year long on what your possible needs. I'm hoping that when I roll this out, that maybe some of the teachers have put together some of the things that they may have heard people ask for. I wish we had this. I wish we had that. And I know the article that you're talking about, um, and those types of things. I think they were recess items, but. Those are, are generic supplies, non-instructional supplies. They have a line that they could budget money for in non-instructional supplies. I think if I was in a building and I was a principal and I saw, you know, we didn't have maybe um, the hopscotch or the other play things and we needed hula hoops, they're not really that expensive um, that you can re replenish. They should go on a cycle. They should be replenishing things on a cycle. And I think that um, with all of the work that's going on, maybe um, that isn't something that's at that foremost, but I do try to drill it. I know that Lisa and Lee constantly say, hey, think about if they ask for something, they say, hey, think about putting that in your budget, you know, for next year. Um, so I know that they're continually supporting how I'm rolling this out. So that's basically what happens. We will not know. And I did ask Ride. I reached out to the contact at Ride. We will not know our number until after January. Sometimes they used to release it end of November, sometimes end of December, and but this year they said we will not know our funding until January. You're welcome. Hope that helped. Are there any principals that, not that you have to tell us who, that didn't use their budget that was allocated to them? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, no one spends their budget um, to an exact, um, dollar amount. I have to be honest with you. There are sometimes some money's left over for whatever reason. Um, I couldn't off the top of my head pinpoint, nor am I going to say, but I mean, the budget reports run this. Sometimes there are leftover monies. Um, they may wait a little longer. I do send reminders. Um, come February, we send a, a memo out from the business office reminding everyone to get their orders in. Um, I think that with the pandemic, um, we probably had some extra additional savings because maybe um, they had stuff that they had purchased before when schools were closed, so they were utilizing that. But yes, to answer your question plainly, yes, not always is, is the money fully spent. Question, the $750 that we... 750 k Yeah, that we gave to the teachers. Yeah, so, so those orders are rolling in. They're rolling in. We're probably at about um, spent and uncovered. Um, I think they're, I, the last time we checked, we might've been at 37%, 38%, somewhere around there. So we're, we're around there, which is, is, I will say that that sounds like it's, it's great, but that's not that bad. Um, there are some, you know, I've sent out uh, to Lisa, she's reaching out to some of the ones that are, have, deal, have been, you know, maybe working on some other things in this school and haven't had a chance to do some of them, but 
you know, they're rolling out. They're, they're definitely rolling out. And I did roll out the library last week, as I said I would do it in, right after Thanksgiving holiday. I haven't heard back from anyone, but I did roll out, um, hey, your new media centers, you each have um, the certain dollar amount. But, but yeah, I mean, they, they the orders are rolling in. Did you tell them that if they use, don't use it, they lose it? I did not say that. Um, not yet. Because we'll roll it into the next budget. So if they don't use yeah, it. Yeah, and I had so 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 it's funny that you just say that. So one of the things that we did is we created a special code at the end so we could earmark it separately. And we're not transferring it out of the capital until we actually see the the, the dollars happening. So we're going to do it on a quarter. So when we get to the end of December, whatever we have, we'll move it out of the capital because you approved it from the capital. But I didn't want to move it, and then they don't spend it, and we move it back. And you know, so so we're moving it as we use it. So we're waiting to see. But we're about 37, 38 percent spent uh, in encumbered too. Okay. So when you send them the next note, let them know. Let them know that Joanne said you're getting cut off. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm sorry. I won't do that. No, certainly we'll let them know that they need to. I, I will. I, I will get on that. We'll run another report. I want to get the budget rolled out, but we will run another report and see where we're at and remind them. And I know that Lisa and Lee have been working um, to help support me and my team on that. And, and we're here to help. I told any one of them. I mean, we had a new principal recently hired who reached out and did ask the questions and she, I started seeing her things rolling in. She had questions. Just reach out and ask. We're here to help. I always offer my staff Maybe they don't like me for that, but I always offer my staff to help, and and they do. I have a good team, so I'm very fortunate. Okay. Well, Ms. Manolo, the next item is your item. Uh, okay. Um, motion to table. Okay. Motion. I don't think we can. It's a discussion item. We just don't discuss it. So you're not discussing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll move on to IT audit. Um, Mr. Charbonneau. I was just, uh, we had voted this committee a couple mm -hmm. of months back, back to go out for an RFP for an IT audit. And I was just looking for a status update. I know we had asked that our legal counsel work with Melissa and Hirsch. Um, okay. We're, we're currently working uh, on the RFP. components to the RFP, but that, that uh, Mr. Charbon, I'm not sure if they'll be able to discuss it as it relates to the town or not, but we got clarifications working on it actively. Uh, so there is a communication with Mr. Hirsch and then we can provide them with that. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Our next one, two, three, four, five, six items are our typical discussion items. So if anyone has any questions on them, um, they can ask now. So on the expense report, um, there's an item for, actually, I don't have to ask that because Melissa did answer it. So never mind. You withdraw your question. <laughs> okay. Okay, table it. Um, okay, now we'll move on to superintendent's update. Dr. McLean. Yes, all right. I would like to take this opportunity to speak to some of the concerns that were raised earlier during the meeting. And I want to assure this committee, our families, our staff, our students, that school safety is of utmost importance to me and to our entire district. Um, I, I hear uh, what was presented tonight as a concern, and I want to um, state that there was a few inaccuracy, inaccuracies that I think is really important to mention. First of all, when there's a weapon brought into a school, there's a protocol and a procedure that is followed by our office. The principal um, contacts the school. We address it right away. Uh, in, in the cases that were raised tonight, those students were arrested. The school committee does know that because you received that uh, clarification. And also those students were suspended. So it's really disheartening to hear someone um, speak in public session that uh, the superintendent overrode uh, principal and didn't allow suspension. That's just inaccurate. I, I do apologize for that misunderstanding and miscommunication. I don't know where that came from. 
but I want to assure this committee that I am very solidly standing on school safety and it is important. And I want our students to feel comfortable in our schools and feel safe. I want our families to know that they're sending their students to school that are safe. And I want our staff to feel safe. And I, I fortunately was able to have a meeting with the PTA union leadership um, I did not know that they were going to be speaking in uh, participation tonight, but we did have a meeting. We did talk about student um, school safety. So some of the ideas that were brought forth are things that are, are in the works. I do um, want to make that clear that school safety is important and the inaccuracy of students not being suspended or the superintendent overriding a principal didn't happen. Thank you and happy holidays. Um, School committee member updates, Ms. Manolo. Um, I guess I've already said a lot, so I'll be brief. I did go to Curtis today. Um, they had their holiday um, and it did bring me back to when I was in Curtis and I did it too. <laughs> but it was their holiday songs and my granddaughter's in it. So I went over today and it was wonderful and it was great to see the kids, all five, all five grades, um, totally inclusive. Everybody was, everybody was included and it was just wonderful. It was. So gave me a happy heart. So I thought I'd share that. Thank you. Mr. Sharman. Um. I'm sad that uh, that Mr. Knight left because I wanted to publicly uh, thank If he gives you his word on something, you can take it to the bank. And that's not all that frequent these days. So I will miss serving with him. I will miss what he brought to this committee. And uh, I wanted to wish him well publicly. So that's it. And happy holidays, everybody else. Ms. Grant. I just want to wish everyone a nice holiday. I won't be here at Monday's meeting. So um, I wish you guys a nice holiday. Happy New Year. Mr. Um, I would like to, to thank uh, the Pawtucket voters for allowing me to serve two terms in office as a school committee member. Um, I definitely growing up, I would never imagine to be in this position. And um, I, I truly love this city. Um, and I will continue to be active and supporting and advocating for youth. Um, and I look forward to continuing to work with you all here in the district. And, and um, I'm someone who's here as a resource. I'm always uh, available and always willing to support and help out anything that's going on. If it's for the best of our community, if it's what's best for our students, then I'm all for it. Um, I also want to thank um, the school committee members. I really learned a lot from serving on this committee with you all. and. Um, and everyone from um, the superintendent to the assistant superintendents, uh, Miss Liz, uh, to um, the faculty of all of our schools, just thank you for embracing me and for allowing me to grow throughout this process. Uh, just once again, I will forever be someone who's willing to do anything that it takes to help make sure that Pawtucket is moving in the right direction. And I look forward to seeing all the great things that continue to happen in this city. Ms. Marina. Thank you, everyone. I'm as you were explaining, I'm as an honor serving with all of you as I am um, as I embrace a new um, um, challenge at the past to express um, 
the appreciation I have um, 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 for everyone who was in the, the audience, um, 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 for everyone in, 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 in the central office, um, um, Cheryl, uh, um, all the, uh, the, the 700 um, teachers, and uh, um, I won't uh, be a um, 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 a stranger um, to all of you. It was an honor um, uh, um, serving with you as we um, we all um, so, um, 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 teamwork. We had slight arguments every, every so often. I, I, I was always interesting. I mean, as all of you, or even as um, we all argued, we always. Um, for what we um, 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 thought was right and um, what it is that um, brought us all here it is um, And um, to prove our um, 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 city, um, I will refer to the new wall, um, 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 Thank you. Um, so we're all saying our goodbyes, but we do have a special meeting on Monday. Uh, <laughs> um, I, but uh, so, um, but uh, I also will um, will end. Um, I uh, want to thank all um, the teachers who came to the meeting tonight um, to share their concerns. I um, I taught in a high school that was um, a very unsafe place to teach. Um, it. Uh, there were frequent weapons, there were frequent fights. It was, um, it was not conducive to learning or to my own personal safety. And um, I will do everything to ensure that our teachers do not have to experience the same thing. My daughter is going to our high schools next year. I will work to make sure that um, my daughter is in one of our middle schools that was referenced just today. Um, and obviously I want her to be safe, and I want all of our students in Pawtucket to feel that same safety. Um, and so I will be looking to see what this committee can do to address that as well. Um, but uh, so I am, I'm not going anywhere, but um, as I, I've told um, the members of this committee already, um, I will not be seeking the chair position in the new year. Um, I, personal and professional uh, responsibilities will just make it so that I really can't dedicate the time that is needed for this um, role. So as we welcome in a new family, we'll also have a new person sitting um, in the center. Um, and I, I will look to support the person who I think uh, can best lead this committee. And, um, and I'll be along for the ride with that. Um, so with that, I uh, wish you all happy holidays. Although I will see you all on Monday for a, um, a probably a pretty short um, special meeting for some business that needs to be concluded um, by the end of the year. Um, that's it. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Ms. Bonello is seconded by Ms. Grant. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries six to zero. <laughs>
board meeting. Yeah, it's 10 o'clock. So can you be on that? I cannot. 